In this presentation, we shall model a pharaoh's sarcophagus. In a normal pharaoh's burial chambers, it's actually comprised of multiple chambers, and we will model the sarcophagus and the pharaoh's mask because these are the most challenging. In the next 15 minutes, we will model all of the geometry that you see here in order to highlight many of the different solid and surface modeling tools in Form Z. Be sure to watch the rendering of the Pharaoh's sarcophagus to see how we can apply surface style textures, lighting, and composite the Pharaoh in a scene after this modeling presentation. So let's get started. One way to start your Form Z project is to import an image map and use that as a underlay sketch. And then using the spline drawing tool, we can then trace over that underlay sketch image. And this is a spline curve, so we can edit the controls and move those around to reshape that spline curve. You can bring in as many different underlay sketches as you want. So for example, in this project, uh, we can bring a top view, a side view, bring in as many as you want, and start tracing a series of profile lines which form a skeleton wireframe cage of the shape that we want. We grab those wires and using the skin tool we can shrink wrap a nice smooth surface around all those wires. This is a NURBS object, so it's an object that we can edit and modify and reshape after it's created. For example, let's zoom in towards the bottom. What we can do is take uh, the segment and maybe move that down just a little bit to reshape the 3D form. Now, this is a solid object at this point. Uh, we can actually split this with a second surface that we have cutting right through our geometry. And as we move that down, uh, you can see we can split that into two separate pieces. And you can split this using any other type of element. Uh, for example, I could just draw some vector lines or some other spline curves. And that line will then split uh, right through that geometry. So we can take that overall form and split it up uh, into smaller components. Next, let's add more detail to each of these different areas. Maybe I'll move this top section up just a little bit and even though we've split these objects we can still uh, have the controls uh, that still allow us to edit and modify the shape. Like let's flare the sides of that surface out just a little bit. Grab hold of those controls and stretch the sides out. Um, how about maybe grabbing the center segment here? And we'll pull that up just a little bit, create a little raised area on the center of that surface. And then the goal is to maybe have a nice transitional uh, lofted blend from the edge of one surface to the other. Uh, there is a loft tool in Form Z that lets you just simply highlight any two edges of any two objects and Form Z will automatically create a nice uh, smooth blended transition uh, that is aligned with both of those surfaces. Now, uh, let's say we want to add some more detail on top of this surface. There's a curve on NURBS tool in which we can actually sketch right on top of the surface that's there and create a new surface which matches precisely to that original surface. We could even take an existing profile, just simply grab hold of that shape and simply pick it up and project it right onto that surface. Now notice that when we edit the controls of that, it does match the controls of the original surface. And we can also edit this in this parameter space view. What this gives us uh, is sort of an unfolded flat top projection view of the object. And we can modify the position of the uh, surface. And we can also modify the actual shape of that surface, which is actually projected onto that original surface that is there. So you can see as we make changes, uh, you can see it still is mapped onto and follows the shape of that original surface. Now this is a paper thin surface. Using the parallel tool we can give it an offset thickness of any value that we want. Now it's a solid object and we can take that original surface and bring it back and we can trim, stitch, and round the two pieces together. We can give it any radius value and you can see we can actually create one continuous smooth surface which has that little recessed area sort of carved right into that geometry. Let's bring that original solid slab back, move that up just a little bit, and to sort of uh, sandpaper uh, and round the edges of the object we can use any of the rounding tools. Just simply click on the edge and Form-Z will create a continuous rounded fillet around the entire edge of the object. Now there's some gold bead detail which is on top of the surface here. So what we'll do is create some 2D flat planes and have those intersect right through our object. And the 2D section tool will allow us to create 
a nice 2D cross-sectional profile which matches where those two objects intersect. Now we have some NURBS curves here. We can go in and edit uh, those curves by simply going in and modifying the number of control parameters. For example, you can see that the original uh, 2D curve that was derived for us has a set of controls that can be modified. Now we could increase or decrease the number of control handles on the object. So let's uh, type in 12. And now you can see we have the exact same shape but with a reduced number of control handles. Now what I'm going to do is take that shape that we have there and using the sweep tool I can take a 2D cross section and sweep it along that path. I can control uh, the alignment so we can go through the center or through the side of that cross section so we can make sure that as we sweep along the curve the profile is sweeping along the top so that maintains itself on top of that 3D surface. Now one other variation to the sweep tool is a draft sweep which allows us to apply a draft angle. It's good for product design and mold design but we can also type in a mathematical function so we can give it a sine wave, a cosine, type in any type of mathematical equation and you can actually create very complex shapes by having that sweeping process derived by your own customized mathematical function. Now down towards the bottom what we're going to do is take the, the surface that we created earlier and we once again have a series of spline curves that are drawn in a top view and once again using our trim split tool uh, we can have those lines uh, project straight through the surface and actually take that one surface and split it into three different surfaces. If I um, delete the center section we can see we now have a nice surface which matches the outside uh, of that original surface. Now this is a paper thin surface so we go to the parallel tool, give it the offset thickness that we want and convert that surface into a solid object so now it's a solid slab.